Welcome to the Tzorba Merabanan Hilchot Shabbat program with Rabbi Shalom Razer. Tzorba is a revolutionary halacha sefer which guides you through over 300 topics in Jewish law in a unique signature style. In this weekly series specifically, Rabbi Shalom Rosner learns through the Tzorba Hilchot Shabbat volumes, helping us all master the halachot of Shabbat in just two years. Tzorba volumes are available for purchase worldwide on Amazon. And to learn more about Tzorba, or for those in Eretz Yisrael looking to purchase volumes, please head over to tzorbaolami.com. For more information, see the description below. And now, Rabbi Shalom Rosner. Okay, let's start the next year. The next year we are in volume number 19 of the Tzorba Me Rabbanon. We are in the shear number four, the second half of shear number four. We're, we're going to discuss other malachas relating to food preparation on Shabbos. But just to note, today's shear is sponsored by Redirect Real Estate Technology Consulting, the leading global provider of real estate technology and appreciation to the Tserva and Mizrahi program. We thank them for the sponsorship. Now let us get into, we discussed last time, the malacha of salting food for Shabbos. We spoke about salads and pickles uh, and the like. So today we'll discuss Tsoveya, Mimareach, and Kosev. Those malachas, they are very big malachas uh, that apply to non-food items as well. But today we'll focus our attention on Dafka, the food items um, that are uh, particular to these uh, malachas. So we start with the malach of Tsoveya, the malach of coloring. Uh, and just one note of uh, conceptual analysis, which is not on your sheet, but the malacha of Tsoveya is closely related to the malacha of Kosev, the malacha of writing. Right? What, how do you know the difference between Tsoveya and Kosev? If you draw a picture, if you write, a, write words, okay, you know that's Kosev, that's writing. If you uh, color a, a uh, coloring book, you know that's Tsoveya coloring. But what happens if you draw a stick figure? Is that Kosev or is that Tsoveya? Not always easy to know. So if you, the, the stipler in the Kilis Yaakov and Simon Mem and Shabbos says, the way that you know is that are you improving the backgrounds or are you just using the backgrounds to do what you're doing? Meaning if I need to write, I can't write in the air. So I need to write on a piece of paper, that's co-safe. If I'm using the background as background, but really the icker is what I'm writing. But if I am improving the background, I'm coloring something. So now the thing that I'm writing on is improved, that's Sovea. So that's the difference, says the stipler, between uh, Tsoveya and Kosev. I I uh, make something better. I make it beautiful. I color it. Writing is the opposite. The what you write on, your background is serving what you're writing. The Ikaro la Asias Osios Miskavin. And the Iker is writing the letters. Ella la Fishi Efsha Lasos Osios Parchos Bavir. You can't write letters in the air. Mukhrach la Sosan al Dover Mamashi. So you have to write on something tangible. Kedeshi is Kaimu. Venimsa Shahani Yor Mishamish la Osios. For Lokam Lacha Sovea, not like coloring. Shat Sevia Mishamish la Hashbiach as a Dover Hamakabala Satseva. So that's a big difference between the to um, Malachas of Soveya and Kosev. Okay, with that background, let's get into Soveya regarding food. So we're going to talk about Soveya, um, how it relates making tea, um, making food coloring, if one wants to make food coloring somehow. So how does that work regarding food preparation? As we mentioned, other Malachas too, Tochein and Borer, they all apply to non-food items, but a lot of what um, the malach has to do with his food, and that's what we're going to focus on here in this shear. As this parak, this shear, Dalid, is talk is titled Hachanas Ochel B'Shabbos. So we're on page one hundred and seventy-three. That's where we will. Uh, that's where we will start. Says the Shibali Haleket. Shibali Haleket, quoting from the Sefer Yireim. We don't have this Sefer Yireim. The Yireim again is one of the Bali Atosvos or Belazvi Metz, a Talmud of Rabbi Um He quotes the principle that is not found in Shas. It sounds like it should be in Shas. Right, we have principles like ein tochein ele budule karka, ein ma'amer ele budule karka. Right, there are limits to certain malachas. Uh, so this sounds like it should be in the Gemara, but it's not, and that's why it's not a hundred percent according to everyone. Says the Shibali Haleket, Rav Sidkiel Rofe, one of the Rishonim in the name of the Year Aim. Sorech ian al karko, maybe shlachas le bishum soveya, certain type of of herb. Charko, maybe saffron. Uh, do you have to worry about that? Soveya. Well, the feed different bal yireim da amar ein derech tzviya betavlin. You don't use spices for coloring. That's not what spices are used for. Spices are used for taste improving, not for coloring. Mutter v'zel lashon yireim. 
Roy Labar Yisrael, Sha'ochel Tutim O Shaperos at Sovet. If somebody's eating strawberries or other types of colorful fruit, Sheyizar Shalo Yigabi Adaim Svoz Begadav, don't touch your Begadim. Um, again, that's another issue of Tzoveh, but using cloth napkins, some folks can say it's better to use uh, throwaway napkins on Shabbos, even if one is fancy, they make fancy throwaway napkins, but not to use a uh, a regular cloth napkin because that's coloring if your hands are dirty. There are other posts that are make up. That's not our topic now. That's what's called derek lichluch. If you're doing it in a wiping way, that's not coloring. That's that's derek lichluch, and that's a heter that the uh, Mishnah Berurah quotes. But either way, back to here, the second half of what the Shibali Alakit says, Yizar Shliga Beidam Svuos Bibagadav Obamapa Avalim Sovea Pito Bamashke Haperos. Let's see, I want to dip my bread into fruit soup. I'm coloring the bread, says the Ram, no problem. Less lanba de ein derech tzviya ba'ochlin. That's not so bad. There's no tzviya. It's not the derech of tzviya when it comes to food. And the Rama brings a raya to this in the Darkei Moshe. That's the Rama's commentary on the tour. The Darkei Moshe from a halacha that the Gemara says that one is allowed to add an egg to mustard. I put it through a strainer. It's really in the Borer context. But the Gemara there assumes that there's going to be coloring of the mustard to the, to the egg. And if the Gemara is not worried about Soveya in that case, says the Ramah, it must be there's no issue of Tzviya when it comes to food. For Nirik Sasraya, he writes in 32, Nirik Sasraya Lodvarov, Right, even though it's going to get a cup, make a color, the Ramah says, you see there, there is no issue of Tzviya. And this is quoted um, uh, based on the uh, Mishnah, Mesech HaShabbos, Kuflam Etes, that's where you have the uh, putting the egg in the strainer, even though it's going to be colored. And this is quoted in Shulchan Arach, all the way at the end of Simen Shin Chaf. End of Simen Shin Chaf. Source number 34 is the end of Simen Shin Chaf, says the Shulchan Aruch. Litein charakom betavshil. Mutter. Ve'en lachish lo mishum tzoveya. De'en tzviya ba'ochlin. There's the principle. There is no coloring when it comes to food. Coloring food is not a problem. Making tea. Uh, iced tea. So I'm worried about bishul. Right? No issue, says the Shulchan Aruch, based on the Yireim. V'yesh misha omer like we just saw, if your hands are going to be dirty, touching your clothing, touching your mapa, could be coloring. That's not food. That's begadim. Dipping food into a color. Stop here, no issue. The problem is, A, that principle doesn't appear in the Gemara. And number two, there is some evidence the other way. There seems to be some tzviya when it comes to foods. The Gemara in Shabbos, the Afa Ayin Hei, talks about the malacha of shochet, the malacha of killing. And the Gemara asks an unusual question. Shochet mishumai chayef. Why are you chayef for shochet? So you know what the answer should be? Shochet is shochet. The Gemara doesn't ask that by any other malacha. Well, what are you chayef for for bona? You're chayef for bona. Why are you chayef for for chorish? You're chayef for chorish. So the Rishonim struggle here. What's the Gemara asking? Shochet mishumai chayef. So it could be that the question is, Are you when you kill, are you only chayef for killing? Is that what it means? What else? Of course you're chayef for shochet. But are you chayef for anything else? And look what Rav says. Rav says, Mishum soveya. There's coloring. Because when you shecht an animal, the blood goes on to squirts out of the animal's neck. And there's coloring there. Shmuel Amar Mishum Betil Sashama. Shmuel says, no, no. You're just chayef for taking the life, which is shochet. Mishum Tzoveya, E Mishum Betil Sashama. Lo, E Ma'af Mishum Tzoveya. What Rav is trying to say is that you're also chayef for coloring. But one second, isn't that going to be meat and that's going to be food? So isn't that an issue? That sounds like there is svia when it comes to Ochlin. Amarav, milsa da amri, ema bel milsa. I don't want I don't want the later generations to come and laugh at me. Let me explain myself. Soveya b'may nichalei. Why are you happy about this coloring? Nichalei delisus beis hashchita dama. You want the blood to squirt out of the neck so that it looks like a fresh cut. And people are going to want to buy it. Kihecha delich zeyuha inshi v'leso lisbonu minei. You're going to come buy it. And therefore, says the Rav, uh, you're chayafert soveya. So if you say that all Rav is worried about is the coloring of the skin of the animal. And that's what the Arzarua says. The Arzarua, if you'll skip for a moment, the Bir Alachi in Source 37, on the next page, quotes the Arzarua. The issue of coloring is the neck of the animal, nothing to do with the meat. Then there's, not, there's no raya. There's no raya against anything because that's not food. That's about the neck of the animal, which is hide. But if you say it's the meat itself, 
the meat itself, which sounds like lechzio inchi, it could mean meat. So then you have it seems like this is there is tsoveya when it comes to food. So the chay adam, the chay adam here, based on this uh, rav, says it must be that even the yireim of ein sviba ochlin is limited. If I'm dafka coloring, intentionally covering coloring food, that uh, for, with something that normally is used for coloring, that it could still be a problem. It could still be a problem of sovea. Again, he quotes this uh, this Yireim in source number 36, and uh, then he says, after quoting, how do you deal with all of this evidence? Shochei mishum sovea and ain't sviya ba'ochlin. Ve'akal panim, but towards the end of the piece, says the Nishmas Adam, nearly to ha'umnin, amasaknin, mine mir kachos, vitsovim vitzva'an, Right, the uman in that that they make they make certain types of of uh, mixes. adding color to wine. People who sell wine should darken with svarach. Wow, could be a this is daraisa. Could be this is daraisa because the the who's the chayat the shpas adam says who says that the uraim is right and who says he's across the board. There could be some chilukim. That's a chiddush gadol to say it's a daraisa because we know you need a davar hamiskayim. You need a davar hamiskayim for for an isa daraisa. It has to be permanent. So any food, is that permanent? Is that going to be permanent? Okay, it's a chiddush. Maybe it'll just stay there forever, the color. But you could also say that even if it's going to be chayiv, it might not be a daraisa. But continues the nishma sadam. Afim nat yirakarkom, the yeshlomar. I'm at the end of source number 36 here, on page 176. If you allow the charkom, the saffron that we said, the yeshlomar, the nesinus acharkom, enem yishom when you add that, that herb, you don't care about the color at all. That's a pure side um, result. All you want is the is the taste. The color just comes memela. You make tea. Do you really want the color of the tea? Is that part of your hana? You don't care as long as it tastes good. So if that's true, so then maybe that's where there's no issue of sovea, where you have totally no interest in the color. Something that you have some interest in the color, so then says the Nishmas um, Adam, I think it could be a, I think it could be a problem. One more source, then we'll have to try to put all this together. If you're using food, but you're not coloring it, stam as food, but there's a reason you want it colored, then that could be a problem. Because that's not ochel. Ain't sviya ba ochlin if you're doing it to eat it. I'm making myself a cup of tea. Or I'm going to, I don't know, put jelly on, on a piece of challah. Right? I'm coloring the challah. But that's okay. I don't care about the color. And I'm doing that for food. But let's say you're doing it for a different reason. The Prima Gundam discusses. What if I want to color something because I want to sell it? I want people to buy it. I want it to look in a certain way. So then I'm not using it as food. Then it's for a purpose. It's for a purpose. Says the Prima Gundam. In source 38, the yain adon belavan shari, the mash ba'afsha rotsa lasas mara shari. Even if you want to color white wine red, says the prima god, I'm not so sure about that. Why are you coloring it? The yesh la'ayin. Bimochre yain saraf umay dvash. Im rasharan litin mara b'yain saraf v'dvash lakonim. Can they color their wine or honey? Denichalu b'ka, because they're very happy to have it colored. V'lodami l'char kom b'tavsha. That's not just putting a spice into, into your pot. That's, that's, you have no interest. But here, where you're doing it to sell, so people are going to pick things up on Shabbos and pay you after Shabbos, that could be an issue. Where does this come up about the, the wine coloring? The Shulchan Aruch and Hilchus Pesach. Hilchus Pesach, the Shulchan Aruch says there's a little to use red wine. Zecher to the dam. So if somebody wants to use red wine, but they, let's say they like white wine better, or they, they're health-wise, they can't have red wine. So they want to use white wine, but they, they put a drop of red wine in. So the post can say, if you're doing it for that reason, l'shem the simen, you should put the red wine in the cup first. Put a drop in the cup and then pour the white wine in so you're not coloring. Because there you're not doing it. Even if you say, ain't sviya ba'ochlin, there you're not doing it for the ochel. You're not doing it as ochel. You're using that as a prop. If you're using it as a prop, so then it's going to be more problematic and there's going to be the malachav tzviya. Malachav tzviya. The, the, the taz, uh, if you're a member in Hilchah's Pesach, says, well, we don't do that nowadays. We use white wine because of the blood libels, and we're, we forego that chumrah because of the, um, and we go like the Meikar Adin, where white wine is fine, because we don't want to get into, into problems. The Mishnah Burah summarizes what we saw in 39. If you're just coloring foods, but not for the reason of coloring, you're just coloring it because you're eating it, and you want to eat it that way. That's mutter. Right, even though something becomes red, if you mix the wine together. 
even if you have in mind to color it, right? And uh, the Rishpah Zadam says maybe not. But the Mishabura adds that to color wine for, for commercial purposes, that might be uftin techol, which is a, uh, a, a separate problem. Either way, me'ikaratin, it seems like there's no tzviya by food, but the Nishbas Adam, Rav and Sovea, so maybe according to some, some would say le'yish l'hachmer to maybe not color, put the color in the bottom first. That's what the Sharetzian says. Bofanzeh, if you're making tea, tov yoser she'yera ha'mayim l'tocha essence. Put the water into the tea essence. Put the essence, put the, uh, the, the colored item. Let's say you're going to make an iced tea. Put the powder in on the bottom and then pour the water not to color it. Again, but that's a chumrah. That's a chumrah. Me'ikar adin, there's no coloring when it comes to food. The Shriya Shabbos says, Ein isert tzviya ba'ochlin, source 41. There is no coloring, no malach coloring by foods called odlo yiskavin l'sviya samachal. If you don't really care about the coloring. El arak l'tikun o shipur taimo. You just want it to taste good. And to taste good, it has to get colored. But you're not really interested in the color. No problem. Tea, petel, me'ikradin, it's not a problem, says the Shmir Shabbos. Says the Shmir Shabbos. V'nachon limana minisinas chomer tzoveya, if you're doing it dafka to color, you want to color, like the case of the wine that we just get, that should be avoided. It doesn't say aser, because remember, the uraim, we're not sure, the uraim might say that's mutter too. Ain't sviya ba'ochlin, even if you're doing it to color the ochel. But there, it's more gray, and therefore says the Shmir Shabbos, nachon lihimana, minisinas chomer tzoveya, Better to withhold oneself and not to do it. Gam kshachomer zatzmon echal, even if everything's edible. L'shem shinoi tseva machal bovad. V'yalachas kama v'kama. Surely, if you're doing it dafka liaposo, you're not doing it to eat at all. Uh, good. And then he says at the end, l'charchila. You know, if you don't want to rely on this uh, heter of the Yireim, uh don't. Again, the Shulchan Aruch quotes it. The Yireim quotes it. The Shulchan Aruch quotes it. And then the Achronim start to say maybe it's not so clear. But Me'ikar Adin, Ein Sviya Ba'ochlin, that is what is that is what is said in the Shulchan Aruch. The Rav Pa'olam, the Benish Chai, says, maybe it can be mechali between liquids and solids. Coloring liquids, coloring solids. I mean, the classic coloring is liquids. The herbs in the, in the, in the water and the, and the soaking. That's the, that's the ultimate, that's the Av Malacha, so to speak, of Soveya. So maybe by liquid is more of a, of, a, of a reason lesser. That's what the Rav Pa'olam says. Near Lomar, the shiny Mayim Vishar Mashka Miha Ochlin. Maybe there's a difference between the two. And skipping to the second paragraph, M. Kain Hashta. May Achar di Ikat Svia Bamayim in a Torah. Since there's coloring, Mida Araisa by water and wine, the coloring the water. But Osa Ayanat Seva Niska, Lahaki Isla, Migzar, Bechal Mashkin. So I'll be Mugozer by all food, all liquids. She Yishtanu Mar Isam that change their appearance. But they also Dover Hamatolahem because of the. Item that you put into them. You don't have in mind to color. You don't usually color with them. You make a When it comes to liquids, aval tavshil. But says the Rav Paulim. When it but by a food, where you put in the color red coloring, like a lemix or bay, because that's not considered sove. It's like a food. So that's the Rav Paulim. Rav Ovadia wonders. I don't understand this chilik. Mutter is mutter. You make it a new gzera. A gzera after chazal? We, we don't make any new gzeras. Me'ikra in the Iran says mutter. When it comes to food or when it comes to liquid, what do you make a new gzera for? The chilek between foods and solids? Uh, foods and liquids? Says Rav Avadi and Yabi Omer. He quotes the Rav Paolim and he says, Lafiani is daiti, yesh lafak peik poze. Shere dover yadua. We know sha'achar chasimas atalmud ain ligs or gzeras midatenu. After the, the, the Gemara, there's no gzeras. We have the power. We shouldn't be making Zairus for Klai Yisrael after the Gemara. Kumosh Yikas V'kala Poskim Rishonim Achronim Like all the Poskim say, V'chein Herech and he quotes Rebbe Yosef Gufa in a, in a different Shuva and therefore because we don't we didn't see this Zairus anywhere Umeachar the end of 43 Meachar Shlo Re'inu B'Shum Posek She'izkir Zairus Zu Minale I don't know why they meant he mentions it Ligzar Zairus Chadasha She'shaloshir Mavuseid So Adkan Food So Tzoveya by Food Make her there's no Tzoveya by Food there's no issue of coloring, making coffee. The issue of bishul, if the word, but coffee and tea and and any other type of coloring wouldn't be an issue. Make it in, unless you are using the item, the food item, not as food. 
So then it can be subject to Soveya, as we see by other malachas as well. Where else does coloring come up? Again, one, two other examples uh, are given here in front of you. One is the toilet deodorizer. Sometimes when you flush, there are people that have in the toilet a type of air freshener deodorizer. And whenever the flush goes on, uh, some of it shoots out. And sometimes it's a color. And sometimes the water in the toilet ends up being blue. So you let it do that on Shabbos? You are coloring the water. So you're allowed to do that on Shabbos. We right? have a picture there in Source 44, a uh, sanitizer, a colored deodorizer. Shabbos, You can put one into the toilet. Right? You could use the deodorizer that shoots out water, but better not to have a colored one which shoots out and colors the water. You'll see in about Yom. If you come to a place and you see that's the toilet, remove it. Remove it before Shabbos. Better not to. Better not to have it in because that's coloring the water. That's not food. And that's calling the water. Are you interested in that water? Are you interested in the coloring the water? Are you interested in the smelling good? Are you interested in the water being colored? That's not as clear. You have to have a color in order to smell good, but you don't need it to be colored. Unless you want people to see that it's a freshly deodorized toilet. So, so, so it's not so clear. Either way, the Shmir Shabbos in the footnote there, again, the Shmir Shabbos on top, you paskins l'chumrah, but in the footnote, which often happens, the court of Zama with the Kula. The call zed dafke mefshel ashtamish bechitui, shlom ashanet tzeva, if you have the option, you have another toilet in the house. What if you're staying in somebody's house and all they have is colored toilets, meaning where it shoots out. Avalem ein chitui, shalom ashanet tzeva, hamayim mutter, hamayim mutter im lo hekbit al su tzeva. If you don't really care, it's okay. You just want it to be disinfected and smell good. The kavanaso rak lechitui. Adayin afshar, maybe there's an isra of molid reach, but he says maybe the uh, whole, whole thing is not shayach. Shamayim nishpacha miyad, the water's not staying there. Right? It's not even, we know there are different levels. There's miskayim, which is permanent. There's eno miskayim, which is not permanent, but it's there. Let's say I, I, I ride on fogged up windows. So that's kosev de rabbanan. That's not miskayim, but it's going to be there for a while. And then there's writing in the air. Writing in the air is nothing. That's not miskayim at all. So it could be that this is considered not miskayim at all because the water is going to be flushed. What, this, you call it the water? Five minutes from now, somebody else is going to, going to go to the bathroom and this water is not going to be here anymore. So it could be that there's no issue uh, regarding Savea by, by the toilet. Again, look at Achilles, seems not to use it, but Meikra Din, Rishlomo Zalman says it's okay. The Archa Shabbos is against it. The Archa Shabbos, Rav Rubin in Yerushalayim says he thinks it's a problem, but Rav Avadia and others are Meikol, if Eim Breira, Eim Breira. Rav Avadia here in, in Chazan Avadia has a couple of Svaris. A couple of Svaris, why it should be Mutter. Why it should be Mutter. Nishalti, he was asked in 46. In Mutter Liftoach Zerem Mayim Bishabbos Vesakise, can one open, can one flush the toilet, and then the uh, flow of the water, the flush will go into the toilet bowl. Ala asla sasherutim, sheishba sabona sabone hatsovas zamayim. You have this soap thing that shoots out the disinfectant. Lechora says Ravadia three reasons lahakel. Three reasons lahakel. Number one. Nere, lechora nere. Shein lachush bazel lesert via samayim. Number one. Mikivan shakol shemiyad hamayim nishtafim v'nelamim. As we said earlier, the water is going to be gone in a minute. Right? When it's flushed, it's gone. The ain kol kiyam l'sviyazu. There's no kiyam at all. Right? The most of it is ain't a miskayim. They know also elami durabanan. Right? It's, the whole thing is durabanan. So number one is you don't care. It's, it uh, gets lost right away. Which, by the way, Rav Avadia says also in his toothbrush, toothbrushing uh, tshuva, where he talks about, you know, that part that might be a little cooler with the toothpaste, which maybe we'll get to a little bit later. Uh, Be'ez Hashem, and that is, it's, it's spit out right away, and it doesn't last. So here, no more, there's no kiyom. You don't have kavana to color. You're not trying to color, it's psikresha. You just want to flush the toilet. So psikresha by a durabanan. So that's already a machlokas. There are some that are makeup by a durabanan. A psikresha by a double durabanan, we're for sure makeup. And this even has another tzad l'hakel, says Rav Avad. Yeah, and that is... Are you coloring directly? This is grama. This is indirect. You flush, the water goes in, the water shoots out, the color shoots out. This is grama. We had shir ma psikresha. Psikresha de grama is mutter. Psikresha by dal drabanan is mutter. So you have a couple of svaras here. Shari ain't sviabala ela ayide grama. Pasaras hamone eshokal chamayim. And therefore, 
uh, he says, I think this is going to be uh, mutter because psikresha by uh, uh, grum itself is uh, at most a drabanan and uh, the coloring is not uh, miskayim, so you have what to rely on. Rabbi also in the opinion of Allah, quote both by the opinions, if you have another toilet, you can use the other toilet, but if this is what you have, so then one could rely on it. That's Sovea when it comes to toilets. To toilets. We spoke about Sovea by food, Sovea in the bathroom. One more, one more issue of Sovea that's brought up here, uh, and that is, what about the transition glasses I am wearing now? These glasses, when you go outside, they become sunglasses. Is there any issue with that on Shabbos? Bar Hashem, no. There is no issue. Rav Moshe has a chuba about this a long time ago. And, you know, more and more, uh, it's become common. Uh, Rav Moshe says there is no problem of sovea when it comes to photochromic or photogray lenses on Shabbos. Says Rav Moshe in Arachayim Chela Gimel in Source 48. Bitvar Zchuches Shal Mishkafayim Shenikra Photogor. Shenasu Bofazeh. He describes it. They become sunglasses. When they come back into the shade inside, and they, they lose their color and they become regular glasses. So is that okay on Shabbos? It's coloring. It's making them dark. The answer is no problem. You're not coloring anything. Not color anything. It's 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 if you call the previous thing Adam is kind, this is for sure Adam is kind cloud. You go inside it it uh, loses itself. This is what Rav Ribiat uh quotes this he sowed often in his uh big svarim on, on Hilcha Shabbos, what he calls Derach Tashmisha. It's based on an early Shilta Giborim. Something mode of usage. If something is meant to be done and undone, done and undone, that's not a true form of the malacha. These glasses, sun glasses, regular glasses, sunch, that's not a, that's not a malacha. It's like closing a door. If I have a hole and I put a big board on the hole in the door, that's the malacha bona. But if I close the door, that's not bona, even though I closed up the hole. What's the difference? Because I'm going to open the door and then close it and then open and close it. So it's meant to be done and undone. Zipper, is zipper tofer? Putting two things together? No. It's meant to be done and undone, done and undone. Tofer and korea. We discussed a little bit by borer. It's not a true, uh, you have a, a dirty plate. That's not a true taroves, but it's also, it's meant to be cleaned and dirtied and clean and dirty. So here too, Ramosha says, uh, it wouldn't be a problem of the photochromic lenses. So that is all sovea. Let's move on to mimachik. Mimachik, the malacha mimachik. Also, one might think, where does this come up? Mimachik, smoothing out hide of animal. That is the... Av Malacha of Mimachik, uh, later on in the 39 Malachis, smoothing, smoothing. Uh, but this comes up because of its tolda, Mimareach. Mimareach is taking a thick substance and smoothing it and smoothing it. So is there an issue of putting peanut butter on a piece of challah on Shabbos? Let's see. What about putting icing on a cake? Says the Gemara in Shabbos, Tafayin Hey. If somebody smooths a, a hide against a pillar on Shabbos, that's Mamish the Malacha, that's Chayef. Mishum Amachi. Hamamarech Retia B'Shabbos. If somebody smooths a bandage with cream inside, Chayef Mishum Amachi. Wow. So that's a Malacha Amachi. As we know, you're putting on gauze, you're putting on cream, you have to know how to do it. But we're not talking about the non-food items now, but how to put on cream with X's and if you have a burn. Uh, so what do you do? And a, a, a baby uh, diaper rash. Many alachas where mimareh comes up. Toothpaste, I think we discussed back in the Malacha of, of Dash. But says the Mordechai, when it comes to food, when it comes to food, there's no issue of mamachik. Uh, because, after all, what are you accomplishing? You could eat it, the language of the Mordechai is that, you could eat the food without the mimareach, without spreading it. So what are you really accomplishing? What are you accomplishing? Okay, I'm going to be machmir, fine. But me'ikra din it's mutter. He quotes, Tershish shel tapuchim, mutter lachlicha, ve'im m'shem machik, ein ibud ba'ochlin. What did we say before? Ein sovea ba'ochlin, ein ibud ba'ochlin, which is the uh, preparing the, uh, the the food. And the Ramah says, Mutter, source 51 now, on page 184, Mutter lahachlik ha'ochel You got to put on margarine, b- peanut butter. You got to spread. Got to spread. I could take shalant and mush it. Mutter lahachlik ha'ochel b'shabbos. V'lo avi b'zeh mishim b'machik. 
I could eat it without the spreading, and I'm not I'm not uh, creating anything new. So the Ramah says maybe it's good to be machmir. The Magen Avraham says no. There are many cases that one doesn't have to be machmir. No, you're just spreading food. The Magen Avraham says, are you spreading? Are you spreading when you put peanut butter? No, you just want all the bread to be tasty. You don't dafka want to spread it and make it smooth. Right? You just want the bread to be tasty and every piece of bread to have the peanut butter taste on it. So that's not spreading for spreading, right? Just like the tzoveya. You're not coloring for coloring. You're coloring for food. So here for year, year two, says the Mangan Avram, you are spreading for food. And therefore, there is no, there is no reason to be, um, to be machmir. The Bir Alacha also uh, quotes, L'mali b'makam harekan, l'mali b'makam harekan, yish l'hakam mitam de'efsha l'echa b'loze, e'en lo l'hachmir klal. The Biscay Tshuva summarizes, and says, well, really there are three there are three types of cases, says the Piskei Chuvos. Three types of cases. Aleph, the top of 185. You have no kavan how it looks. You have no reason for it to look good. Right? You're just putting peanut butter on your challah and eating it. You're putting margarine on your matzah and eating it. So that's for sure mutter. Huter hadavar b'cholinya. That's for sure mutter, says the Piskei Chuvos. V'yafilu b'dvarim she'ein ochlam asam b'le meiruch. Even if you couldn't eat it without meiruch, I don't know, a piece of margarine. Nobody's going to eat margarine as is. Only if it's spread out. But if your whole purpose is just to put it there for flavor, not to, not for uh, smoothing how it looks, mutter. Number one. Number two. K'she kavanaso b'meiruch l'shem noi v'yofi. If your kavana is for beauty, and you would not eat it without spreading it. That's midurabanan, but that is if you are smoothing it, l'shem the smoothing, and you care how it looks. Here it looks. I don't know, and you're not planning to eat it, right? Let's say you have a caterer who's who's smoothing. What about an ice cream cake? You care how it looks. There though, you're going to eat it. So that's a little tricky. That's like in the middle, spreading icing if you're dafka doing it in a very fancy, neat way. So, see the third case? You would eat the icing. Right? Plenty of people like to eat the icing. So, if you wouldn't eat it without the spreading, I don't know, a piece of margarine, but margarine you're doing to eat. But if you could come up with a case of something that you're doing it for how it looks, and you wouldn't eat it without the spreading, so then we say that is... Um, that is a problem. But if you would eat it without the spreading, but you're doing it for a little bit of the yofi also, so then says the um, uh, the piskei shuvas meikra dinat smutter, but machmer tavo la bracha, tavo la bracha. So spreading out, uh, if somebody uh, you know has food and they have uh, icing, making the icing is a separate issue of lush. We discussed lush a few weeks ago. But let's say you have the icing from before Shabbos and you're just spreading it, so lachor it should be mutter meikra din because there. Uh, you would eat it without spreading it, and you're doing it more just to, you know, uh, to make the food look tasty, make it look tasty and nice. You're not doing it to, to, to stay there. But you could understand why, you know, one might say that, oh, you're doing it for the looks, and therefore it could be an issue. So that's Sovea, and that's Mimareach. Two more discussions of food preparation on, on, uh, on Shabbos. Then the next year we're going to get to is opening packages. But uh, here we go. Measuring and weighing food, 186. There is an Isser Durabanan that not everybody is aware of, of measuring on Shabbos, Medida. I'm not allowed to measure. Let's see, t- taking, so, you know, you happen to have a non-electric scale. You have to be somebody, oh, you have a scale. I want to I wanna see how much I weigh. Measuring on Shabbos, an Isser Durabanan. Uvdin Dechol. It's a weekday activity because when in spying and selling, that's where you measure stuff, buying and selling. So that's where the, the Bisha says in Shabbos, uh, the last parak, the Bisha starts off with backwards. The Bisha says when it's mutter. Medida shall mitzvah is mutter. Measuring stam for no reason, for non mitzvah reason, that's asu drabanan on Shabbos. But Medida le mitzvah is mutter. That's what the Mishnah says. Modidin as a The last Mishnah Shabbos talks about measuring a certain type of uh, garment or the mikvah. And what were they measuring? They wanted to see if a barrel fit into a hole because they wanted to know if the tumah went through. But that's, that's the last case of the Mishnah. So the Gemara says there, Kufnun Zayin, way at the end of Masech HaShabbos, that Medida Shal Mitzvah is mutter. 
And that's the Gemara tells a story. Ula ekla be Reish Galusa. Ula once visited the Reish Galusa. Chaz yela Raba Baravuna. The Yosef Abba Avana Demai. He saw Raba sitting in uh, an Avna of water. Interesting. On Shabbos, this, this Amora is sitting in water. The Kamashachle. And he was measuring it. Amrle Eimer. The Marabana Medita the Mitzvah. What are you measuring the water for? Only you can measure a mikvah if it's kosher. The lav mitzvah miyomar. If it's not midi the mitzvah, you're allowed to measure it. Amar le misasik pa'almahu. I was daydreaming. Unbelievable. It gives a little chizik. I wasn't focusing. I was just like uh, mindlessly doing an activity. So misasik misasik pa'alma. Amazing. But that's the. But what do you see from there? Midi the mitzvah, and that's the shulchan aruch. Shulchan aruch says simin shinvav source fifty eight. Mutter limdod b'shabes midida shal mitzvah. It's mutter to measure on Shabbos midida shal mitzvah. Kigon, what's a midida shal mitzvah? Limdod im yesh b'mikvah b'amsa. Is there forty sa'a in the mikvah? For limdod azar mishuhu chola v'lo chashalav. You can measure out a bandage if it needs to be given to a chola. One can anything l'shem mitzvah can be measured. What about measuring for ingredients in a salad? Is a oni Shabbos is a mitzvah, but just don't be so exact. That's what the post can say. Don't be so exact in your measurements. Be a little heaping, a little less. Don't be so exact in the measurements, and then that would be uh, okay. Giving food to a baby. What if somebody has to measure their, they're on a very strict diet, and they have to weigh all of their food? So if it's for health purposes, so it would, uh, again, be okay. That would be L'Shea Mitzvah. I would say if it's, a, if it's a general, I want to keep healthy, maybe don't be so exact. A little more, a little less, a drop more, a drop less. But that's what the Shmir Shabbos says. Getting ready food for a baby, that's, that's needed on Shabbos. You have to know the quantity about what the child is eating. You're allowed to, as long as it's not electric. Better, not to be so, not to be so, uh, so exact. Uh, what if somebody wants to measure, you know, to see if the, it's a kezayis or a kebetza, right? Any of that would also be mutter. The Alkid Yosef talks about that, if somebody needs to, uh, to measure. Uh, Rav Moshe discusses, what about taking temperature on Shabbos? So again, usually if you take any temperature, that means you're a chola. And if you're a chola, that's l'shei mitzvah. That's l'shei mitzvah. It doesn't really come up. It's mutter for that reason. Rav Moshe assumes, though, that it could be that medida of, of temperature is totally not shayach to regular measuring. The medida of uvdin dechol, which the post can discuss, is measuring solid items that you're going to sell, apples and, and, uh, and weight. By the way, weight measuring is, is uh, length or width or even weight, either, either one. But Ramosha says measuring temperature, ain't no inyan klal le medida asura. It could be it's not shayach to that, you know, to the type of medida that's asura, and therefore it wouldn't be a problem. So we discussed soveya, and we discussed mimachik, and we discussed medida. Number four, fourth and final discussion. What about kosave by food? Making signs, making shapes with food. So sometimes you go to a caterer, you go to a simcha, and the caterer has this huge, I don't know, melon made into a shape. So hopefully he made that before Shabbos. Hopefully before Shabbos. Sometimes you have the tuna fish that's made into the shape of a fish, this fancy. So the post game talk about, is it, that's food. Oh, food ain't sphere ba'ochlin, ain't kosave ba'ochlin. Not true if you're not using it as food, like we said by Tzoveya. Like we said by Tzoveya. Rav Huna in Beit Zedav Chavches says, you're allowed to make a shape of meat on Shabbos, on Yantif. So maybe that's more. So you can make your meat, you can cut your meat in a specific way. Rav Huna cut his meat into triangular shape to show that it was his, that it was his cut. So it seems like mutter. Is it mutter? There's no issue. The problem is the rokeach, uh, the Rav Huna seems to say it's mutter. The Rokeach in Source 63 talks about being chokik into your matzah, an eitz, a bird, a uh, uh, wood, right? Engraving anything would be a problem. Would be a problem. The Chay Adam, Chay Adam says taking dough and shaping dough into a specific shape is a problem. Asr lasos mina isa suras of oshart sura. Right? So, so what's that? Again? So, what do you do with Rav Huna? Rav Huna says it's mutter. And then you have all these examples, the prima godim, right, making a, a specific type of hole in, uh, in matzah. So the difference seems to be how, f- I, you're allowed to cut meat, right? You're allowed to cut meat on Shabbos. So you want to cut it in uh, squares, you want to cut it in triangles, that's, that's okay. That's not, that's not co-safe. Because you have to cut it. Those are generic type of shapes. 
what what it means when it's usher is that you cut you're cutting it or you're shaping it to something very specific, very a complex shape. The Yerach Hashabbos. Yesh l'chalik bein asias tsura pshuta, a simple shape. The ain lesser but there's no isser. Mishum shirashoy adam lachtoch machal lachatichos. You're allowed to cut your food into pieces. Av ubachal chaticha yesh but tsura kolshu. Every piece that you cut it has going to be has to have a shape. So ain lo dover so you're allowed to cut if it's not fancy. If it's a complex shape, Yoser, Shachal Shem Tzi, or people will look at that and say, wow, nice shape. So that could be an issue because there is. If you have it there not for food purposes, so then that could be a, a problem, right? This gets into also writing a names or words on a birthday cake. The al should not be done. If one bites into something that you can't do a malacha with your mouth while you're eating. So if somebody has on a cookie, that's why I say you should have it on a, on a cookie, write happy birthday, and then you can take the cookie and bite the cookie and eat the cookie. But it shouldn't be written because then cutting it, that's, ko say these malachas are shayach to food uh, in a certain, uh, up to a point. But uh, here, in, the, in cases of shapes, we said uh, fancy shapes should not be made on Shabbos with one's food, even though, even though we have the principle of ain. You know, shape any uh, kosev, but ochlin generally, that's only by non expert uh, shapes, but by fancy shapes, you know, that could be more of an issue. Okay, this takes us through. Sheer Dalid. Next time we pick up with packages, opening different types of packages and cans and bottles. That'll be Vedashem the next year uh, when we meet again. Again, today's year was sponsored uh, by Redirect Real Estate Technology Consulting, the leading lo- global f- provider of real estate technology and appreciation to the Tserva and Mizrahi programs. Everybody have a great day.